Are we ready? Praise the Lord, saints. We are so glad that you joined us this <clears throat> evening. Welcome to Oak City Community Church's Thursday evening Bible study. Again, we are glad to have you all here. And at this time, I'm going to lead us in an opening prayer as we begin to break the bread of fellowship. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. God, we thank you for the privilege to come into your presence one more time. Uh, Father, we thank you for your protection throughout the week, God, how you kept us um, from danger seen and unseen. Uh, we thank you for your hand, God, for your healing hand. We thank you, God, for always showing yourself strong in our lives. Uh, Father, I pray for tonight's lesson, God, that your word would go forth, um, that we would continue to do your will and to walk according to your purpose, Father God. Um, we pray for forgiveness of our sins, Father, all the things that we should have done and didn't do, God, and things we did and we shouldn't have done, Father. Um, thank you for the vote of Jesus and that we can ask you for forgiveness for those things and continue to call you Abba, Father, because of Jesus' death on the cross, God, and his burial and resurrection, God. Father, we ask for wisdom on tonight and pray that you would continue to strengthen and guide us. And again, let your will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. At this time, we'll ask Brother Carl if he would read our scripture. I'll be reading from Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet praise. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the trumble and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the, the high sound cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. May God have a blessing for the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. What a timely reminder. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you are breathing, you have something to praise God for. Um, thank you so much for that wonderful scripture. All right, at this time, I'm going to turn it over into the capable hands of uh, Sister Sharon Haley as she leads us in song this evening. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And he was crucified, and God raised him up, and he spoke from eternity. Majesty and glory all power to his name majesty and glory let all the earth proclaim he was crucified and glorified and all power in his name oh lord my god i am in awe the majesty and glory of your name. Oh Lord, my God, I lift you up. The majesty and glory of your name. The majesty and glory Majesty and glory, the majesty and glory of your name. The majesty and glory, majesty and glory, the majesty and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful selection. Man, we thank God for the majesty and glory of his name. You know, as uh, Sister Haley was singing, it reminded me of Sunday's lesson on Acts, uh, Acts 412. There is no other name given under heaven given unto men whereby men must be saved. Amen. Um, so we just we thank God 
Thank God for the name of Jesus. And at this time, we will turn over the service to the wonderful hands of our teacher this evening. Um, thank God for the word. And Pastor John. Praise the Lord. Amen. Majesty and glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> we serve a mighty God. I'm very uh, thankful today by uh, that song, Just This Fellowship. Um, some of us, some, some people uh, engaging tonight have been in the trenches today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some people have been in the trenches this week. Some people have been, uh, you know, some people have had had, uh, had the red dots hit them, but then bullets didn't hit us because <laughs> God shielded them. All right. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't that the aim was off. The red dot was was on, on location. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was right there. But uh, but God's hand uh, protected us. Uh, some of us don't know that we were in the trenches. Some of us don't know that the red dot was on. It might have been on our back. But, uh, but God's hand protected us, and we're here today alive and well and kicking. I see Sonia Porter. I, I see her alive and well and kicking. I know, I know, I know the devil tried. I know he tried. <laughs> I know he tried, but, uh, but he didn't win. And that's why you're here today. And, uh, we all have, uh, we all have a testimony. We all have a blessing. Does anybody, by the way, before, before I really, uh, get started with what God has been speaking to me all week this week. Um, and I want to hear your thoughts on this thing, but, uh, but does anybody have any other testimonies, any other scripture readings, any anything to add? Um, uh, Sonia, you look like you might have a testimony. I, I do have because you know, really since Christmas, I've just been probably at the lowest place of my life. Take your time. Take your time. <clears throat> you muted, Sonia. Uh, Sonia, you muted. You muted. You muted. We heard lowest place of your of your life, and then you uh, you actually yes, you. yes. And and I tell you, I just had to go before the Lord and just cry out. My spirit had to cry out. My soul had to cry out. And. And I said, I know there's a greater purpose. There's a greater purpose. I have a quote that um, one, I forgot who, I think it was Pastor Bobby was teaching on and it was talking about purpose. Not It's over here, I read it a lot. I should have it memorized, but at any rate, um, God is just so good. And I've just been singing his praise all day, every day. And even when I was in the trenches, I just had to thank God for the glory. I had to thank him for bringing me out. I had to thank him for keeping me alive. I had to thank him for just keeping me and just, again, allowing me to fully and completely understand that if I try to give God something and say, I can't handle this, but then I try to handle it, then, you know, I'm not, I didn't give it to God. So I realized I did that for a long period of time and I thought I was in his will and I realized that I wasn't. And when I was, when I, that realization came, something just broke. It was like, God said, I'm taking this off of your shoulders. You don't have to carry this no more because now I, I completely gave it to him mm -hmm. and he restored me quickly. And I'm just so grateful Thank to you. God. And Thank you. I just am so grateful to God that he even saw me worthy enough to hear my plea, to hear my <laughs> cries, and to answer me swiftly like a good father does. And I'm so happy. I have not felt this good in 48 years. So I've been carrying something a long time. And I'm so thankful to God. Thank you, Jesus. So know how thankful I am. That's all I wanted to say. Amen. Thank and you. And God, and then He heals after He after He broke. He says, "Now I'm going to heal the whole situation." So He's not just going to bless me; He's going to bless my family. Hallelujah! Thank you, and Jesus. God gets Hallelujah. the glory in all of this. God gets the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. 
God is a restorer. He's a healer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's interesting. Uh, one thing that jumped off the page to me, beautiful testimony. Can you turn that down, please? Um, it was interesting to me that you, said that you had been in the lowest place um, in 48 years. But then when you finished the testimony, <laughs> uh, it was interesting that you went from the lowest place <laughs> to the highest place. So I, uh, I just, I think that that's just an amazing, amazing testimony. Um, and, and that's how God does it a lot of times, y'all. If you feel like you're in the lowest place of your life, you know, there's a, I mean, I'm not gonna say there's a great chance. I've just seen time and time again, where people have gone from their lowest place in their life to the highest place, you know, I don't know how God's, uh, you know, when you look at like a stock, you know, you think it's trending up, uh, you know, the human life, if you were to compare it to a stock, sometimes in God's economy, <laughs> so hallelujah, sometimes in God's economy, I mean, whatever's trending down the heart, I mean, your biggest downtrend is, 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 is like evidence <laughs> of your explosion upward. And uh, I just love, uh, love how God does that so often. I've seen it, I've seen it so many times. So uh, that, that is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, uh, and, and Sonia, we love you and we're thankful for you. And we're praying with you. And, uh, and, and we're praying that these blessings stick, you know, <laughs> that, that God just fortifies <laughs> blessings and, and just keeps you moving in an upward direction. That's a wonderful testimony. Um, <clears throat> Beautiful, heartfelt testimony. Um, and, and what I love, you know, another piece of it, I'm sorry, I'm just, but another, another piece of that testimony that I just love is, is, is he's a good father. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, that sounds like your conclusion, Sonia, is that he's a good father. As a good father does is, you know, at the end, when you look back, you're just like, he's a good father. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's how, and that's how we should all feel about it. And that, that's how I think we do feel. Most of us here today, we do feel like he's a good father. If you're a person who has not experienced that, I just ask you to have a relationship with his son. Believe, trust in his son. And you'll, you'll, you'll find out, I, hopefully real quick, but you'll find out that he is a good, good father. <laughs> the smarter you are, <laughs> the longer it'll take. <laughs> Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody else? Any other testimonies? We can't. I, I, got, can. I got two quick ones. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where is that? Is that, that that's the infamous Ray June. Hold on. <laughs> infamous. I got, I got two quick ones, man. The first one, uh, it, it it's actually it's actually my daddy's testimony. He ain't gonna tell it though, so I'm gonna tell it. But uh, <laughs> it's a um. So I got a I got a homeboy. His name is Dustin. <clears throat> and I met Dustin like maybe maybe uh, two years ago, but um anyway he's always like you know listening to the music, super supportive, um and every time we talk, yeah I mean just like real spiritual God fearing man, uh he's a little bit older than me, but he sends me a message a couple of days ago, maybe yes yes yeah, a couple of days ago, he sent me a message um he sent my song uh with my mom on it. To one of the uh, a guy, I guess I don't know if it's from his, the guys from his church or if the guy uh, he just I don't know how he knows this guy, but anyway, he sent him the song with my mom on it, and he recognized my mom, and he said, "If this woman is his mom, then I know her." Uh, and he said, "I used to attend, I used to attend a church," um, and this is over thirty years ago. So, uh, so I said, "What's his name?" And his name is uh, Phil Bryson. Nobody, uh, my mom and dad didn't remember, but his name is Phil Bryson. And uh, so Phil ends up sending another message. Uh, and he says, uh, 
Ray's dad was the first person I met when I joined the church at Greater Apostolic Faith. He said he made me feel welcome and did all he all he could do to make me feel comfortable. That's why I joined the uh, I joined the choir because of him. Um, he said Ray Junior was probably too young at the time, too young at the time, but he was walking and talking, I think. And and so I, we really trying to figure out who this dude is. And now uh, that uh, my homeboy said he's a he's some kind of a pastor. <laughs> I don't know what church he pastor at. But and I ain't saying my dad got him to be a pastor and like that, but I'm just like, dang, 30 years later, this guy's a pastor and he remembered, you know what I'm saying, my dad in that whole situation um, and just how he felt and, and how he made him feel. And uh, I was thinking to myself a couple of weeks ago, I, it hit me like randomly. I don't, I don't even know what I was thinking. I might have been reading, you know what I'm saying, something. And uh, I was like, man, my dad's gift is like, he, uh, to serve, like he, he's really a server, a servant. Um, he just serves people. And uh, I never just like sat back and, and realized and, under, and like realized that uh, fact. Uh, I, I, I mean, I've always known it, but um, yeah, I man, he had the uh, heart of a servant and uh, to hear that story was cool. So uh, yeah, man, 30 years ago, a testimony from 30 years ago, uh, now he's a pastor, I'm, I'm excited to meet him. He shared his mu my music with his son. I gotta figure out who his son is now, but I just thought that was super cool. Uh, but he he was he he wanted my dad to call him and he was trying to get his number and all that. So uh yeah, man, I just thank God for my pop and his heart, man. Um and yeah, man. So uh and how and how they him and my mom raised me, uh the man they raised me to be. So I'm thankful for my parents, thankful for my pops. Uh, second um testimony, uh, and I'll make this one real quick. But uh Many of y'all know, you know what I'm saying? I have the, the non a nonprofit organization. We go into the schools and go out to school programs. Uh, before we started this year, we had a uh, we had a young lady, not a young lady. She was actually around uh, my age. Um, she's not a kid, but she uh, she wanted to volunteer her time and be a part of the after school curriculum. And uh, I, we follow each other on social media or whatever. When we met up, uh, to talk about, you know, um, the program and what she was willing to, uh, you know, do for the program. Uh, she has like, she's very open, like free spirited, you know, she's very like, she, she'll take some things from Christianity. She'll, she'll, she's open to like digging into different things and kind of like just pulling and, and, you know, leaning on different things for wisdom and just life advice. And just, I don't know, just whatever the case may be. I could just tell like, she's not, you know what I'm saying, where she need to be. And, you know, I got to be kind of careful about what I let her do because we're not a faith-based organization, um, you know, on paper. But it's like, I still want to watch what, like, you know, the individuals I put around the kids um, and students. Uh, but uh, it's funny, man, because uh, like, like we'll be in, in the classroom and she's not the only one there helping, but uh, I'm I'm starting to see like some kind of a shift in her, and uh, I I've been start I've been seeing it, but today she came in, and I couldn't even I couldn't even like run the, the program like I was supposed to because I'm trying to work with the kids, but she's so excited she then downloaded like three new devotionals on the, devotional plans on a Bible app. And she's like, you're gonna be, you'll be so proud of me. Look at look at this what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And I, I thought it was like that's all it was gonna be. But I'm trying to talk to these kids, and she just still talking about all this, you know, this devotional and, and Bible this. And she's talking about the church, and she and she feel like she's supposed to be getting back into the church. And I don't know what it is, but I'm like, hey, let me just shut up and listen up, <laughs> listen up, <laughs> listen up for a minute. But uh, uh, it's just it's just funny to see God like uh, work like in the details of this whole thing, because the last thing I'll say about this, we have a, like a we have like two or three students. I brought one. I told y'all about one uh, I, and I went I wanted one to be added to the prayer list because um, she's just into some super dark things. But this girl, I mean, this 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 lady who's helping us, uh, her name is uh, Faith. Um, she like that was kind of hard when she was a child. And she just really brought that, like brought that up today. Like after we, um, after we let the kids go, she was telling me like, that's how she was as a kid. Like she was like on into some dark stuff and she was able to like connect with these girls. 
And I kid you not, two days ago we had to make a a thank you video to uh for the pe- for just the general like the general public who helped us reach our little uh our campaign goal. And then we had to make a thank you video for the church. And as soon as I said we have to say thank you to this church, this girl just shut down and wouldn't say nothing. And when and I and you can see, I still got the video on the video, everybody else laughing, smiling, and yelling. And this girl is to the corner, straight face, like look like she just mad at the world. And, but then the next video, when she don't have to talk about the church, she's not, I mean, she's just smiling and, and happy as can be. And wow. so today, when I uh I was trying to tell Faye, the girl who was the the lady, you know, uh, older lady who's in there helping me, uh, who's you know, all into the Bible right now, and hopefully she'll stay in there. She was, uh, she was, uh, she was, she had to work with this young lady and I hope y'all not getting confused because I'm doing a lot of rambling, but she had to work with this young child who was into this dark stuff and wouldn't say, say thank you to the church. Mm-hmm. She had to, uh, have, she had to make a group of kids create a graphic, uh, for the church now, because they made a video today. They supposed to like make a graphic on the iPads that we got. And when she told me that she was going to go to that girl, I said, listen, you might need to take that one to the other group of kids because she didn't want to, she didn't want to even say thank you to the church. And she got kind of like, she looked at me like she wasn't trying to hear me. I said, all right, go ahead over there. See for yourself. And by the time she, by, by the time that the class ended, the little girl who didn't say nothing, she ran up to me with the graphic saying, thank you to the church, gave me a high five and just happy. I, I couldn't understand what was going on, but she just in there able to connect with these these different type of children wow. um, in her own little way that I wouldn't have never got, you know, to connect with on the, in that way. I was just going to leave it alone, but mm-hmm. she pressed the issue. So I just thank God for like the little, the like him working out, you know what I'm saying, in the details. And I don't know what else going to happen, but hopefully stuff like that just keep on happening because, you know, that that's the kind of the vision, you know, uh, that we can't promote that vision. I will. Let me just shut up talking. So yeah, that's the vision. Thank God. <laughs> beautiful testimonies beautiful beautiful testimonies it sounds like uh the seeds that are being planted by the 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 young ray june and and his father well well well, actually that's like a father let's see that's generational seeds planted (laughs) we see seeds planted by the father that have have, uh turned into a wealth of of uh, ministry and seeds planted by the sun, they're transfer- transforming lives. Beautiful things happening. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Beautiful, beautiful testimonies. God's at work, guys. <laughs> God's at work. God's nah. at work. Soul yeah. winners. Hey, Who's uh, yeah, I have one. Um, yes, sir. Come on, bring it. Yeah, it's real quick. So um, y'all know sometimes, you know, Robin and I, we go up uh, to Oklahoma from Texas and back down and stuff like that, right? So usually we pray, you know, it's just like, God, get us there safely, you know, God is there and back, you know, just, you know, the usual, you know, traveling grace. <clears throat> we got in the car, Robin and I already prayed, but I prayed because I, I wanted to pray. And I specifically asked, I said, God, I don't want no tickets. I don't want no tickets at all. Just Keep, you get us there safely, but I don't think it's like no pullovers, no nothing like that. I ain't prayed like you know that before, you know, ages. Anyway, we're on the road, and um, <clears throat> of course, I'm keeping my eyes out and stuff like that. I'm going down the road. We're in like Ardmore. I get distracted or whatever. There's an SUV, a police uh, SUV on the left hand side, and it had a spotlight on and everything. I blew right past it going like 105. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So like, I'm sorry for the facial I, expression, guys. I did. I turned and I I just happened to see it like right before I passed, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap. And, and so I turned, look in the river. I say, here we go, because like he was right there, spotlight on everything. He don't pull out. He just he stayed there. I'm like, I'm still going. I'm still looking at the river. <laughs> he don't pull out. <laughs> I'm still going. I'm like, I get over the hill. He's out. The, he has the vision. I'm like, he does not pull out. He doesn't follow me. He just passes me by. And so I'm like, I look over to Robin. 
Robin just don't, she just don't know phone. I said, Robin, do you see what just happened? She was like, no, what happened? I'm like, I just went past a car, a <laughs> cop car right on the thing, like 105. And he didn't like pull me off the top or nothing. He says, oh, I guess they must set that up to like, you know, scare people. And then just went back in our phone. And I was like, <laughs> you're not gonna pretend like that just didn't happen like that's just regular like bro like an suv police right there <laughs> so i just want to you know, thank god you know for his you know mercy and grace and uh the fact that i, I hadn't prayed a prayer like that and he literally showed me like his power like he said not only am i not gonna give you a speed ticket but i'm gonna have you speed well i'm i'm, I'm a speed and then even though you're speed amen yeah <laughs> and then <laughs> You're I'm right. Now. Up to where you should get a ticket, you know, by all you know human logic, but you're not. So, Amen. yeah. And, and we are also going to encourage you to, to to stay a little close to the speed limit as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I told but, you. but but that was that was some mercy taken. But God God definitely spared you for sure. <laughs> um, but but we want we want to we still want to gain the wisdom. To, to move forward in in in, uh, in wisdom. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Robin, did you I have like, No, I would just like to confirm that we, in fact, did slow down on the trip back after <laughs> after being foretold by our parents. So. Good man. So yes. yes we, we were not Roman six Christians. Wherefore, may we sin less grace of ground. God forbid. <laughs> so, Amen. We, 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 we heeded that morning. Uh, <laughs> We've all been there when we look down, we realize we're driving too fast. So I understand that. All right. <laughs> Jonathan said, Lady Grace's face. <laughs> In the chat, Jonathan, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan is always full of wittiness. All right. <laughs> Do we have any other testimonies today? Any other testimonies? I mean, I'm just blown away by, uh, by Sonia's testimony. Um, not, not to, but Sonia's testimony just really rocked me. And uh, and just hearing about the seeds planted by Ray Sr. Um, they have turned into, you know, I mean, who knows how many souls have been affected by some of the seeds planted. Uh, I just I just thank God that, uh, I just thank God. What, Cynthia, what was that? Say it out loud, let's see. See, grandma said. Oh, I'm, I'm, Mama said. Mama was talking about somebody who's feeding. She said they, she said they was feeding. They said they let their guardian angel so many miles behind. <laughs> <laughs> the guardian yeah, angel just flies at a certain speed limit. <laughs> uh, that's funny. No, the good thing is, is that that God knows our frame. You know, He He factors it in, but we don't want to use that as an excuse to. Tag done wisely. All right, praise the Lord. Does anybody else have any uh, any testimonies, scripture readings, or anything like that? Thing to add. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to come back and tell the Lord, thank you. You know, so many times we ask for prayer, and God answers our request, and we don't come back and tell of His goodness. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I think you all might remember. I had requested prayer for CJ on his job because one of his employees was being low-key stalked. And, you know, people are really crazy and strange in this day and age. So I had just been praying, you know, God's protection over the young lady <clears throat> and over CJ because they had to get the police involved. I just want you to know God has come through yet again. Right. I came back to tell him thank you. That young man um, was removed off the crew not allowed back on the campus that young lady was allowed to come back to work today with peace of mind hopefully that's what I prayed for was her peace of mind Jesus. knowing that the threat had been removed so I just thank God for his keeping power his saving power his hedge of protection that he is a faithful God unto his people we do serve a mighty God I appreciate your prayers continue to pray for us Jesus. Amen. Amen. I wonder if that I wonder if that uh, young lady realizes that there's a prayer warrior <laughs> that she's never even met, probably. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty sure uh, CJ told her, this is so funny. Now, CJ texts me. <laughs> yeah. He said, Mom, tell Grandma Lad 
that God has answered her prayers once again. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> but I, I told Grandma Lad that she just said her prayers have been answered once again. So I'm pretty sure he said something to Desiree, you know. What's amazing is Grandma Lad. Prayers have done a whole bunch of stuff. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. Some of y'all got promotions because of Grandma Lad. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. When we were thinking about uh, Ray, when uh, Ray Jim was talking about his dad, oh my God, he does have a service heart. <laughs> this is so funny, and I'll make it really quick. At least an hour over at their house last Sunday. That's just chilling. I wanted a hot dog. They didn't have any. When I say Ray got up off the couch, he in that kitchen, hey D, I got this. I'll put it on for you. Now, I ain't even had a headache that day. This man done had a kidney transplant. He got up, whipped that up. I was like, God, I thank you for answering prayers, you know, concerning his health, his strength, that he felt like an upset of going, oh, Ray, I could have did it, but he jumped right up like he has never had an issue in his body. I thank God, I thank God. When you're talking about generational, you go back mm -hmm. to Bishop Lad. I mean, it's just in the family. And I just thank God for this body of believers. Amen. 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 You know, I think that there's some things that, that transcends physical health sometimes. I mean, he's just a, a servant, you know. <laughs> when it's time to serve, he finds a way. God, God might have to bring, 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 at some point, God brings them to us. When we're young, we, we can go to them. At some point, God brings with us. But whatever it is, God finds a way. Sometimes they got to hold your arms up. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. I just thank God for prayer, the answer, power of answer prayer, you know. I mean, not the power of answer prayer. I thank God that we serve a God who answers prayer. <laughs> How about that? I hate it when people are like, the power of prayer, you know. It's the, it's the God behind that that matters. That's right. I just thank God for that. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yeah, boy, this has been rich. Might be. Anybody else? All right, well, we're going to move forward um, with, with uh, this, this wonderful father we have. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know quite how this is going to go. Robin, you're the one with the, uh, with the riots to, to pull up stuff. Uh, no, I believe that's Dr. Ladd uh, who's controlling me. Oh, uh, okay. The screen. Um, if you can pull up Isaiah, well, I guess we're going to start in Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Um, this is not, uh, well, actually it is, but we're kind of just getting the framework for the verse that God has put on my heart or the statement within the verse that God's put on my heart all uh, week long. Um, and scroll down to verse uh, 13. And I'm going to, I'm going to pray real quick over these words. And then DeAndre, if you can read the first three verses here. And when she gets done with 15, we're going straight to 53. So, um, but Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Father, uh, reverencing you because you're worthy of reverence, God. Holy, is re holy and reverent is thy name. We bow before you. We love you. You're so high, God. You're so high. We're so unworthy. Seeing your wonder, seeing your good works, seeing your love towards us. God, we're so just unworthy. But we just thank you, God, that you put up with us. To call these babies. And you call us your sons and daughters. To call these babies. So I just ask in Jesus' name that you just uh, continue to continue to speak to our hearts, God, today through your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we're in Isaiah 52, verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. 
and many were astonished at thee. His visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. And then, yeah. So shall, his, so shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told, them shall they see. And that which they, they had not heard, they shall consider. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of many sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sh sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was stricken and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was there any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. I'm just going to stop right there. Um, the verse that, that has been on my mind this week <clears throat> is, is this uh, first part of verse 10. Um, and I wanted to actually open the floor um, and just, and just kind of talk about this verse, but um And not really the yet part, just the part, <laughs> the part where it says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And and like um, when I think about this this particular, well, number one, when you look at this word here, uh, many translations actually use a more, in my opinion, more accurate word in this particular case, um, because many translations say crush here. Um, it pleased the Lord to crush him. Uh, when when you look at uh, this, this Hebrew word here, the, it comes from the word dacha, which uh, dacha, which means uh, basically means to be beaten to pieces. Um, 
But all week, you know, I've been thinking about the fact that it pleased God the Father. Like, we don't know how the guy here works exactly. But it pleased God to crush, to bruise Jesus. And it just, it, it's just, I just can't get it out of my head because I know that there's a connection between that pleasure and his love for me, <laughs> his love towards us. And, and I just wanted to, to, to discuss that a little while. I have, I have some thoughts of my own that I want to share, but, but, but I first want to open up the floor and just uh, kind of ask you like, like when you hear that, like what comes to mind? Like, like, what do you think about, is there anyone who has anything that comes to mind when they hear that? It's just, it's just so interesting to me. They please the Lord to bruise him. I, I will say, um, and I ain't trying to be quick to say this, but I have been, um, I've been reading, um, Ephesians lately and, and it definitely brought out the scripture that, that really stood out to me the most. Um, and it's in the, it's just Ephesians, it's the first chapter, uh, verse 18. <clears throat> and I overlooked it the first time I read the scripture, but, um, can we get it there? Can we get it to, um, Ephesians, uh, 1 is that, that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I can't, yeah, we can go there. I well, mean, oh, oh, are you the one doing it? No, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that. Oh, oh okay. Okay. My bad. I was just asking whoever done. Okay, go ahead, Rachel. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, you good. Um, well, if you're gonna put it there, I'll just read it straight, read it straight off there. I was gonna read it from my Bible. But it said the eyes of your heart, I mean the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. <laughs> um and then mine. <laughs> My version mm -hmm. says, my version says the riches, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And, and you know, and, and I overlooked it at first and I said, hold on, that don't say our inheritance, that say his inheritance. And I was like, he was in the same word, you know, all it, cause he opens up talking in the, like just speaking super lavishly and just all this rich language about we see it in the heavenly places and according to God's rich, I mean, his riches of his, the riches of his grace. And then they get down there and say the riches of his glorious inheritance in us. And, uh, wow. and that just really just stood out to me. Man. And I just like, every time I open the book, there's seed feeding us now, just that line just pops up in my head and it makes wow. so much more sense just reading the rest of the, the book. Um, but when you said that <clears throat> I pleased him, it's just like he, that's something that God, you know, since the beginning of the time, he'd been trying to have, he wanted relationship with us. He just to be in relationship with us and just, you know, for us to be able to, you know, walk with him in a garden, you know, and, uh, and just to see it, it just makes that, you know, make it, that's, that's all I had. I ain't going to keep rambling, but that's, that scripture came to mind when you, when you on the first part of that scripture. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. been something I've been kind of like just meditating on really really day by day, man. It's just like, when you think about it like that, it kind of just helps you just like, just walk throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man, I'm going to shut up. But yeah. That's great. I love that. Pastor Daryl. No, I, I, that's just great. I, I, I like that. Uh, I, I like, I like what Dre June was saying. And I never you know, really looked at it like that, but it's really, it's like, um, it's like, it was not the, actual act of it is the is the result of the act and it's like um they had to do something and there's just so much you know pleasure and joy of what's being accomplished by it and that's it, it just 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 that's just a, just the deal itself so it's not like it in itself it's you know it's something happens after that that's like people say the view was worth the climb or something like that, or you know, that that means you don't have to like the the actual part of it, but there's a great pleasure in, in going through whatever that is. 
uh, like Jesus said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He didn't say he like, enjoyed the cross, but there was joy set before him. And it wasn't necessarily that, but it was beyond that. And in and, and this part that, that Greg Jr. is reading, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints, that's something that that happens afterwards. We could even be called saints, and that was his inheritance in us by doing what he did at Calvary. So I, it just, I don't know, I don't have I had a lot of thoughts, but just it's just kind of eye-opening the way, way we look at it. And um, I mean, I, I know some things like, um, you know, Ray Jr. was talking, I'm thinking like, there, there are some things that we do that we don't like doing but having done it it just feels great um it just just feels great and I, I for, for me yesterday i had a uh i had a um i had an irs bill that has been a while and i just been dreading it and dreading it and dreading it and then um yesterday when i called him and said okay from the papers online blah 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 and i hated i hated the whole day because i'm calling at two o'clock and i was on the phone for an hour and then finally said okay we do it right now and uh when i paid it <laughs> i felt good i was just happy all of a sudden i mean i, I was so happy i i uh i'm just happy <laughs> and i uh i, I uh cash up somebody a hundred dollars and they called me and said what's up? I, i'm just happy i just thought you might need a hundred dollars i mean i'm just i got that happy <laughs> And then, and, I mean, it was funny. And I said, he said, why? Why? I, I just felt good. And I just felt good. And then, uh, and then, then I sent him 65, cash him 65 more dollars saying, get, get your son something, you know, uh, buy him something. You know, it's like, it was kind of weird, but I was just that happy after being so sad and hated to do what I was going to do, but having done it, you know, I was just, <laughs> just, just, just joyful, you know? And uh, so I'm mean, I just, I just thinking like, it, there has to be some, because you, the way you read this, you know, Pastor John about, you know, I never really thought about, you know, I used to actually have parts of this on my wall when I was in college, but I never really paid that much attention to, to the actual pleasure of that God would have in, in bruising uh, and crushing Jesus Christ. And so it's not, you know, something beyond that. So what did he see? I mean, it has to be something they check the box. This is my will and something was accomplished. And I just, I just like the way, um, Ray June put what what was accomplished, you know, just the fact that there could be something body called saints all of a sudden. They couldn't be anybody called call saints or inheritance without that. And it's just uh I don't I don't know where you're going with the lesson, but I, I just it's just an eye-opening part, just even right now. It's just it's just it's just mm -hmm. great. It's just great. Amen. Uh I think Grace made a comment, labor and delivery. Because I, I wouldn't know nothing about that. Well, 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 I mean, <laughs> I just not <laughs> directly, <laughs> no, <laughs> but I mean, indirectly, it, it, that's a very great example of, of oh, something yeah. that is agonizing mm -hmm. during the time, but it's well worth the wait. It's well mm -hmm. worth the agony. Yeah, it's the great. side of the agony is a beautiful baby. Yeah. Uh, and this is Bernard. I think uh, what all you guys have seen has uh, made me think of. Uh, a proud uh, parent, you know, not only uh, is he doing it, but he's doing it for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I mean, it leads me to kind of my, one of my main questions. We can go back to uh, Isaiah 53, if you don't mind, we're going to jump around a little bit more than that here in a second, but um, it makes me think of, uh, you know, it pleased the Lord to bruise him, you know, why, <laughs> like, like why? And, and, and I mean, I think, I, I think I kind of know why a little bit, but, but maybe I don't, I, I think I could learn a little bit about why, uh, but, but why, why did it please the Lord to bruise him? I think that, that you've alluded to that answer here in that, uh, the joy that was set before, obviously, you know, and we, I think we we're part of that, right? I think we're a piece of that joy for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe that's maybe that's that's it, or is there, you know, there's so much to this, you know, um, so deep. And, and and you know, and I'm not saying I'm definitely not an expert on this, but you know, I hear people all the time. Uh, still to this day, I've heard this my whole life, and it, it's just such a lie. It's so it's so it's such bad ideas but they always say oh the god of the old testament he was you know 
he was all about wrath and judgment and justice and uh, you know all that stuff and they got a new testament it's all about love and so on and so forth and uh and and i don't you know i don't quite see it that way <laughs> you know right, yeah. I, think, I think that uh i think that god god is is far more complex than we are number one and number two uh he loves very very deeply and uh but quite frankly if if any of you know if any man were, if God were like man, the children of Israel would have been vanished, killed off a long time ago. <laughs> like, like, I mean, God's so patient and long suffering. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there's no, nobody like God. Um, <clears throat> and, and when you look at this, you know, what was being dealt with on that cross, um, you know, what was being dealt with on that cross? So I'm just going to open the floor just just briefly, and uh, everyone, this is open gate for anybody to to speak. But uh, but why why did it uh, please the Lord? And we've already alluded to it a little bit, but why did it please the Lord to crush His Son, to crush Jesus Christ? Why? I had to step away for a little bit, but what I think about sometimes, I mean, what I think about when I read that is that it pleased God to have to bruise his son because Christ was the sacrifice for all of our sin. And he was the only, will be the only true sacrifice. So it pleased him that his son, in my opinion, pleased him that his son was such a willing sacrifice. And and he had to take on all of the sin for now, forever, for all of mankind. So I think it was a, a, a loving type of bruising because of the end result, which would be to offer us the opportunity to be with God. Amen. I've definitely been in agreement with that for sure. <clears throat> I had one thought is um, yeah. one of my favorite scriptures is third scripture that I'm amazed by is second Corinthians 5 19 and it says to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation mm -hmm. now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God so I think it pleased the Lord, it satisfied the Lord that he accomplished you know, what he wanted to do, which was bringing us to himself through Christ. Okay. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Um, can we go to Isaiah chapter one real quick? I just wanted to point out just one little thing. Um, well, a couple little things, but we're just going to bounce around a little bit. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to have you bounce around a lot. I apologize about that. Uh, <clears throat> you look at Isaiah chapter one, scroll down to like verse 10 ish, 11 ish. Oh, uh, yeah, right in there. See, it says, Hear the words, the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom, give ear unto the law of our God ye people of Gomorrah. When you think of God, Sodom and Gomorrah, what do you, what do you think of? Sin. You think of sin, right? Uh, judgment. Somebody said, you think of sin, judgment, heinous sins, uh, people who have forgotten God. Uh, I think of Las Vegas, Nevada, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, I mean, we have things that pop in our mind, but, um, but when we look at this, it says, uh, so, so, so if, if number one, if God is referring to a people as Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, like that is not a, that is not a compliment. It's not a good thing, but he says here, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom, give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Say it, the Lord. 
So these people, he's referring to them as Sodom and Gomorrah, but apparently they're still sacrificing. He says, I'm full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. We see an interesting uh, statement like that in the New Testament, um, Hebrews chapter 10. Let's, actually, let's, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 real fast. Let's do that. And if you look at uh, like maybe verses three and let's see, it says in verse three, it says, but in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Um, not only was God kind of, you know, sick of all these fake sacrifices that i mean there were real bulls and real goats being, with their blood being shed but unfortunately their hearts were were not in those sacrifices um we see we see that that this just wasn't enough this was not satisfied does this sound like something that god is satisfied with you know this 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 situation it doesn't sound satisfactory it doesn't sound like this was pleasing to God, at, at, you know, at some point. Uh, and as we continue reading here, uh, let's see here. In fact, let's just, I'll just, I'm just going to read down this passage. I, I, it's hard. It's really hard to start any verse in Hebrews without reading a few more because <laughs> it's just, it is hard. It's a hard thing to do. So I'm just going to read a few more. It says, uh, in fact, I'm going to just bring that last verse in and I'm going to start reading from there. It says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he say a sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Now think about that. That is so deep. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that because that would be a, a serious rabbit to chase right now because of where, where the focus is right now but this is so deep like like god is done with bulls and goats and all that stuff he, he, he's you know it's those are not those sacrifices are never going to fully take away sins they're never going to really really take away sins they're just an atonement atonement meaning they cover up sins uh, God, God accepts them for a time, but they're not going to truly take them away, but a body he prepared for me. <laughs> like this is, this is deep here. I'm going to read that verse again. He says, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me and burke offerings and sat sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O god above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not neither hast pleasure therein which are offered by the law then said he lo I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every preach, priest standeth, this is Pastor Darrell's uh, bread and butter right here, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. These priests were sacrifices of all day long. They woke up in the morning, started sacrificing. I mean, imagine all these people bringing all these bulls and goats and you're just, it, a priest was like a butcher. They were just literally sacrificing. It was a, it was not an easy job um, all day long, all the time, standing up, working hard. Um, 
And according to this, it says, uh, let's see, where are we at? I'm sorry. Uh, verse 11, and every priest said a daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which could never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. <laughs> In other words, it's over. <laughs> like, like I'm done. A ain't no coming back tomorrow. I ain't going to see the same sacrifice over and over again. It is finished. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> it is finished. Um, I just, God is magnificent, you know, and uh, just, just the fact, you know, this is something that's pleasing to God. Now, uh, I want to finish, if, if y'all don't mind, I want to finish in Romans chapter three. And um, I want to finish in Romans chapter three. And this is Bobby's pet taught me this so well. Bobby's such a powerful teacher. Lord have mercy, Pastor Bobby. Thank you, Pastor Bobby, for yeah. who you are. <laughs> um, but Romans chapter three, and I just want to read some, some stuff from, uh, let's see, 20, go to like 21. Let's see. Yeah, about right there. That's perfect. I'm just going to start from 21. Um, it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. The next sentence says, why, where is boasting then? I'm not going to go that path, but, but, <laughs> but where is boasting? <laughs> like, like there is no place to boast here. There's nothing we've done. There's nothing that we do that causes this to take place. And the reason I'm coming here is because pastor Bobby taught me, this word propitiation a long time ago. He since has taught me it over and over again and drilled into my mind. <laughs> but he taught me a long time ago that propitiation, Pastor Bobby, what does it mean again? What does propitiation mean? Satisfaction. The lost moss in the Greek means God was satisfied. Hallelujah. Satisfied. I almost want you to take over from there, Street. <laughs> God was satisfied. We can't hear you, Street. Are you talking? That's just like owing a debt to somebody and not being able to pay it. And somebody comes along and pays it. And then that debtor is satisfied. And um, the best example I could use, uh, Pastor John, was once I had a a pastor who taught me so much. Uh, but he said he had, he, he, he had an accident with another person and it was his fault. And so the insurance company came out and paid the uh, damages, but the guy um, still wasn't satisfied uh, because you know, he had a new car, but it got restored. You know, once you have an accident, it takes the value down a little bit. If you, you look at anything online, it's been damaged, you know, there's a uh, car fax and it takes the value down. And so um, my, uh, my pastor at that time realized that the guy wasn't uh, satisfied and he asked him, Look, what would it take you to, to satisfy you? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. My pastor was not a rich man at all, but he didn't want to leave this guy unsatisfied. The guy gave him an amount in the thousands of dollars, and my pastor paid it because he was a man of God and didn't feel like he should leave that debt, even though the insurance company accepted it. He said, I just want him satisfied. And so the guy said, I'm satisfied now. I'm good. And uh, in the same way, uh, this word is, is satisfied, satisfaction of divine anger, if you will, but um, means that God was satisfied with, with, with all the sin that mankind had done. 
um, you know, when, when Christ offered his blood, God looked at all our sin, everything that had been done, would be done, had been done, and said, okay, I'm satisfied. That sin debt is paid. And uh, it's the one time in the Bible we can truly understand that God was satisfied. Uh, and so when, when, kind of what, to tell off what Brittany was saying, uh, God was satisfied with this payment that Christ made. And um, uh, and it's, it's a word that's only used a couple of times in Scripture, propitiation. It's God was satisfied. So this debt is paid. God is satisfied. There's no going back, no looking back over, nothing we can add to it, making sure, you know, double checking the books all square. God has closed the book on that debt. And when God is satisfied, you know, we can't add any more to it, but it's, it's a, it's a Praise God. Satisfaction, <laughs> satisfaction uh, of our sin debt. So it's a, it's an amazing word. It's amazing. Don't, I want to be on the side of God's satisfaction, Pastor Bobby. That's what I want to be. Wherever he's satisfied, you know, the Bible says it pleased him. To, to crush Christ. Well, I mean, if it pleased him to crush Christ, then I need to figure out why and, and figure out what I need to do in response to that, to it pleasing him to crush Christ. Cause, Cause I think that has to do with him loving me. I think that has to do with him um, being just, uh, you know, being a holy God who has to deal with sin. Um, I think, I think that it has to do with his holiness with, with, with his relationship with all of us, with, with us being sons and daughters now, like I think it's connected to that pleasure uh, in that moment. And I think it's righteous and holy and magnificent and wonderful and so beyond my understanding. And uh, there's no search in his understanding, but I just, it just, it just really, I mean, I, it's just been on my mind, Pastor Bobby, like, like it pleased him to, it pleased him. Like, like, that's how much he loves us. Like, God loves us that much. So for us to for us to sit here and think that we're doing stuff or that, that it's it's about us, like somehow we're inching our way towards the mark and all this nonsense. Like, no. <laughs> like, like, does this sound like what what is the first part of verse 27 right before our eyes right now? What does it say? What does it say, wife? Right here. Where is boasting then? Where is boasting then? And he answers his own question. He says, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Like, like God crushed Jesus Christ. Do we under, can we put that? I know we can't fully grasp it, but we have to have it in our mind. He crushed him. Like for us to come along after Jesus Christ, we just read was marred more than any man we just read was crushed by God, beaten to pieces by God. And it pleased him to do so. We, and then we come along and, and, and say, you know, if I do this and this and this, I'm going to make it. <laughs> like, no. We're just responding to his love. I'm just going to leave it at that uh, on my end. And uh, we can take it off of, of uh, the screen. We can get in full screen mode, whoever's able to do that. And, uh, and, and I just want to, first of all, say that if you're a person that is, is hearing this, maybe you're at a person's house, one of our members' house, or maybe you're just, you logged on, maybe you actually are on this channel, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, if you're a person that, that's hearing this and, and you're wondering why we're so in love with Jesus. <laughs> you're wondering why we, we're so in love with this great God. It, it's because of, of his affection towards us. Like, like we literally love him because he first loved us. Um, <laughs> and I mean, and, and, and he didn't just kind of love us. He didn't Hollywood love us. He didn't, he didn't, uh, I love you when you benefit me. 
he didn't sit by our side because we were uh, good to him our whole lives on our deathbed. You know, he, he, he wasn't, it's not like we were faithful. And the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Like when we were as far as we could possibly be from God, when we were cussing and spitting and, and backbiting and hurting and, and, uh, and stealing and lusting and, and, and like everything when, when, when we were in a horrible condition, God loved us and he sent his son to die for us. And, and we just, we recognize the fact that, that it's not about us. Like, like it's, it's about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ um, bore those sins, all that backbiting, all that cussing, all that uh, ill will, all that hatred, all that malice, all that was dealt with on the cross. The Bible even says he despised the shame. Like it, like it wasn't easy for Jesus to go to the cross. Marred more than any man, God the Father crushed him. But he did it for us because he loved us. And he wanted us to, to receive him. And, and it's not it's not based on what we've done. It does not matter what you've done at this point. God has a way for you right now through the blood of Jesus Christ. When you put your trust in him, you receive that gift. Jesus was crushed so that you didn't have to be. Jesus was crushed so that you wouldn't be crushed. He was beaten so you wouldn't be beaten. The chastise of our, chastisement of our peace was upon him so that you wouldn't have to be chastised. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. Um, I don't know how y'all want to close out, but it's Pastor Darrell. Pastor Darrell. Hey, Amen. Thank you. Pastor Dale, you're on mute. All right. Thank you for uh, another beautiful lesson. I, I love it when uh, we get to Calvary and just see, um, I guess, look at anything through the prism of Calvary. So anytime we take another look at what Christ did at the cross, it's always time well spent thinking about it and what it actually means to us. I think you brought it beautifully again tonight that uh, that we, we talk about you know, Jesus on the cross and what he did and the, the joy that he had to go through that and and don't really hard look at you know that God sent his son but he sent his son it was a pleasure it, it pleased God to, to send his son and and the son uh you know even though we don't know what all he saw in the cup but won the cup to pass but there was enough there for you for me that he saw some joy to go through it and so we see God the Father and God the Son pleased and joy going through what happened at Calvary and that, that um, I don't think we think a lot about, um, but we can't grasp it anyway. Um, and no one could grasp what happened at Calvary's cross. It was dark, you know, and people just, and the Bible didn't go into any account. The, the gospel writers don't tell you exactly about everything's going on. And, and uh, for whatever reason, that's what God did it. You know, he, he made it dark. So we can't never really fully appreciate what Calvary. So we see these pictures of the pictures of Christ, you know, nicely pictured on the cross. Um, but he was more more than any man. You can't picture that. I don't know if you've seen the, the movie Teal or not, but uh, I haven't. But I remember a long time ago, uh, Curtis Mitchell was preaching from this back when he was on Park Street. And he was saying he was more more than any man. He talked about this Emmett Till. I didn't really know at the time who that was. And he talked, tell that story that he was marred and uh, told the story about it. And he said, well, Christ was marred more than any man. So if you could picture what happened to him, that was nothing compared to what Christ went through. So when you see it on the cross, he was marred more than any man. So you have to like, wow, that was something there. And uh, we can't grasp it. We can't picture it. Uh, but we know that it pleased God to do it. And he did it um, for the joy that was said before which was beyond the cross what that did so i, I think it's just a, a time well spent once again to to revisit calvary and 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 see 
you know, I think we've got a greater appreciation, you know, how much God loves us and, uh, and what he's willing to do for us. So I, that's a beautiful lesson. Pastor Bobby. Well, I can just say me and I uh, really enjoyed uh, how clearly Pastor John made this tonight. I love when he got back to the point where he says, where is boasting when he were Romans? You can't, you can't mm -hmm. boast about this. How can we boast about something mm -hmm. that God has done for us? You know, I mean, we can't we can't boast about anything. It's all it's all God. He by himself. Uh, Book of Hebrews says he by himself. I like the way the service started with um, the scripture about praising God. We understand why we have to praise him now, Brother Carl, uh, for his excellent works, for his, just just his <laughs> his name. <laughs> Going back to Pastor John's lesson on uh, Sunday on Acts, no other name. This is why God when God put down his own life. To his son, he said, "There's another way, another, way, another name. That's it, and we ought to accept that." Mm -hmm. And uh, even uh, when Sharon started the service tonight with a song, "I Be Lifted Up," uh, Jesus spake this uh, in uh, John 8, according uh, about his death. If I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. If I be lifted up, you know, I'll, I'll become the way. If I be lifted up, he's speaking about being lifted up on the cross. Uh, John 8, and, uh, and she went on to sing about majesty and. Uh, Glory, glory is your name, and uh, that's and that's why there's no salvation in no other. No, when God shed His own blood, that's Bible. Um, that's that's the Book of Acts. Take care of the feet, church of God, which He purchased with His own blood. When God shed His own blood, there is no other way. You reject that. That's just no other way. That's why the Bible calls this is a great salvation. We didn't have an ordinary Savior. He was no, so we don't have an ordinary salvation because our Savior was not ordinary. We don't have no ordinary salvation because. Our Savior was not ordinary. We have a great salvation. How shall we escape if we neglect our great salvation? So we can we can joy in knowing that the ultimate price has been paid for our sins. And I really appreciate the, how Pastor John just took his time and walked us through it. So I think we all have a fuller, better, deeper, richer understanding of what was paid for our salvation. We can rejoice in our salvation because great is our God, and therefore great is our salvation. So I just really uh, appreciate you, Pastor John, for letting the Lord use you. Um, so encouraged by testimonies. And uh, I'm like you, Pastor John. So Satanya's testimony was started at the lowest point and ended at the highest point. Because God is able. He's, he's just that kind of God. That's, that's who he is. And of all the points that was made tonight, I think the point that was most poignant for me was the point Pastor John made that in the end, it pleased God because that's how much he loves us. When he when when he was able, and he's always able. When he got man's salvation, your salvation, my salvation secured through the death of his own son in Jesus Christ. He was pleased because we made it. He, that's how much he loves us to know that we made it, and that the plan had been worked out. God was pleased, and what a price! And yet God was still pleased because that's how much he loves. He loves us. We should never lose sight of the fact that Calvary and all that affliction and all that pain and suffering was about God loving us and providing a way for us to make it. We have a great salvation. No ordinary Savior, because he was God in the flesh, so we have no ordinary salvation. We have a great Savior. We have a great salvation. Thank you again for this wonderful lesson, Pastor John. Amen. Um, we thank God for tonight's word. As, as was mentioned, uh, what a powerful lesson on the cross and its meaning and power. Um, it just, I know I don't speak alone when I just thank God for the wonderful teaching that we, we receive here. Um, so just, again, thank God for the word. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask if uh, Brother Jonathan Davis will, lead it, Davis will lead us in the uh, closing prayer. Amen. Are there any uh, prayer requests this time? I want you to lift up my wife. She has so much she is doing for so many. I know this catches her a little off guard, but this is an amazing woman. And I think of a rubber band is stretched to capacity sometimes. I look at her, I'm going, sometimes I go, where are you going now? She got her keys in her hands and coat on. <laughs> I'm like, who are you going to take care of now? And uh, uh, just continue to lift her up. She is an amazing uh, vessel um, that the Lord is using in so many ways. And, just want to lift up a special prayer for her. Lift up the ones who, uh, who are fighting things in the body. We know in this body we have uh, some challenges, and God has been faithful. Continue to lift up 
those of us uh, in the body uh, who, whose names have consistently come up prayer, don't, saints, don't stop praying. Uh, but uh, again, I want to lift up my wife in a special way tonight. Remember her as you pray. Amen, absolutely. Pray for me in the school. Okay, absolutely. Um, discipline in my job. Absolutely. Anyone else? Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much um, for another opportunity to learn about you, um, God, to fellowship and to come before your throne of grace. And God, we just thank you so much uh, for the finished work that you did on the cross um, to purchase this, this relationship, God, and this connection that we can have with you. Um, we're, we're not deserving of, of the chances, God, that you give us, and we're just so grateful for your grace and for your mercy. Um, Father God, we want to lift up uh, the prayer requests that have been mentioned, God. Uh, we want to lift up Lady Grace. Uh, God, we know that she's she's caring a lot. She's doing a lot. Um, we know that she's a, a great person of, of uh, integrity, God, a great person of duty. Um, God, we know that she's got a lot of people counting on her. But God, we just pray that you continue to give her strength, God. Continue to give her grace, God. Let her know that she can lean on you, God, that she can count on you, and that she can rest in you, God. God, we pray that you would that you would give her rest, God. You said that your yoke is easy. Yeah, that you said that it, that you will give our, our souls rest. And so, God, we pray for that for her. And Father God, we lift up David. God, we pray that, that you would bless him in school. God, we pray that you would bless him to learn the things that he needs to learn um, in order, to God, to prepare him for the, the career, God, and the work that you have for him. God, continue to, to bless his relationship uh, with, with those that he comes in contact with, God, with the subjects that he studies. And God, give him wisdom. Um, as he goes forward and, and makes choices. And God, we pray for Julian. God, we pray that you would give him discipline. God, we pray that you give him wisdom. God, you said if anyone lacks wisdom, they can ask you and you'll give freely. And as long as they believe and don't doubt. And so God, we pray that you would provide that wisdom. God, we pray that you would bless the work of his hands. God, we pray that you would magnify the things that, that we know that he's great at, uh, his, his intelligence, his imagination. Um, and God, we pray that you would help him with um, time management, discipline, scheduling, God, all the things that um, that he struggles with. Um, Father God, we pray for um, the people in our church who are, um, who are having health issues. God, we know that you're a healer. God, we know that you're a provider. God, we know that these bodies that we have are growing older. They're, they're wearing out. They're breaking down. But God, we know that, that our souls and our spirits are being renewed. And so God, even as you heal us, I pray that you would set our, our long-term hope not in this life, not in this body, but in, in the life that's to come, that's going to last forever. Father God, just thank you so much for everything that you're doing uh, through, through the people in this church, um, and, and just pray you continue to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, again, we thank God for the word that went forward, and at this time, uh, this concludes our service. You all are dismissed in Jesus' name.